Hi, I'm Kevin Jones, founder and president of Ectobox. We're an Industry 4.0 systems integrator. We like to also think of ourselves as manufacturing intelligence solutions company, where we help manufacturers operate more efficiently and grow by connecting to all of the systems within their plant uh, across the organization and pulling that data together into a single version of the truth to give them real-time visibility into what's going on in the plant. A lot of people have been asking about how we create our solutions because we've been talking with a lot of manufacturers that are struggling to uh, keep up and uh, continue to grow in the really challenging uh, uh, environments that we're all working in right now. So we uh, thought that it would be a good idea to pull back the curtain, as it were, and talk op openly about how we put our solutions together. We've done this before. We're very happy to be very open with what we do and how we do it uh, because it's not rocket science and companies can do these and sometimes do implement these solutions on their own. But when they're not able to, don't have the staff to, then we're happy to step in and help enable the process uh, uh, initially to put the solutions in place and then enable them uh, to take the solutions over uh, as they uh, as they grow and, and mature as a data-driven uh, organization. We're going to talk about unified namespace and data brokers and how they can be very scalable and flexible systems. Uh, the, we'll touch very briefly on the challenges that manufacturers have uh, and the fact that that uh, is typically driving them to become more data-driven. Uh, and then we'll get into the approach at a very high level uh, about what the, uh, the data broker is, uh, how it works in a publish subscribe kind of architecture and what the unified namespace is uh, and how this enables that very flexible and scalable architecture. And then we'll take a very quick look at what the solutions look like. Manufacturing is really challenging these days. Uh, within the bigger context of the economy, uh, and also within the plant itself. Uh, the question is, how do companies actually try to solve those challenges? It should be with data. Uh, the uh, idea of becoming a data-driven manufacturer is that a company has a single version of the truth where all of the data from the organization is available and people have access to that data. <coughs> Excuse me. The, how do you accomplish that single version of the truth where everybody, everybody can access, the, access that data and uh, drive better decisions? Well, you create or you, you connect everything and everyone into a network. And then at that point, all layers of the business are integrated and operate based on all that information uh, at all the other layers. And then the stakeholders within the organization can know the current state and the future state of the business in real time. It's that connection of all those systems and the fact that people will have access to that data and are allowed to innovate, to make decisions, and to take action based on that data that really helps a company uh, understand uh, at a much closer level what's going on in real time at the plant floor and to be able to solve problems and then become a much more competitive uh, company that has a much healthier, longer term future. How does that happen? A quick step back. Most companies right now take the approach of having the ERP system at the center of their world. And that's not surprising, the way technology and manufacturers have grown together. The ERP systems are typically uh, a transactional system at the top of the organization, handling orders, uh, customers, uh, uh, inventory, uh, a lot of supply chain, shipping, uh, and uh, uh, accounting. Uh, within the organization. Sometimes the ERP systems are used for scheduling to get that schedule into the plant floor and then data from the plant floor is sometimes reported back up, production, scrap, etc. But when the companies start to realize that they want to become more data driven and connect other systems so that you can uh, be better informed about what's going on in real time, companies will typically create discrete connections between one system and another. And over time those discrete connections turn into a terrible spaghetti mix of connections, which are very difficult and expensive to maintain, especially when you want to replace a system like an ERP system or 
uh, MES system or whatever it might be uh, because you have to reestablish all those connections to get that real-time connectivity. Another approach to look at would be to think about uh, a data broker uh, and also to use a unified namespace. As we've grown and matured as an industry 4.0 systems integrator, we've learned and realized that there should be a strategy that a manufacturer should have for how to identify the fact that the data is valuable in the organization and how to use that data. And with that strategy come a certain set of rules, such as uh, rules for selecting technologies. And those rules uh, are uh, that the technologies should be lightweight, report by exception, uh, <laughs> I always forget some of them, uh, open architecture, uh, and oh, there's another one. I'll remember it later and update the video maybe. Uh, but these rules help us define uh, selecting uh, technologies like the MQTT uh, Spark Plug B data protocol. And with that data protocol comes this idea of having a data broker uh, with the publish, subscribe, or hub spoke architecture. Uh, so with this kind of architecture, then the ERP system and all the other systems are pushed off to the side, and that puts what we think of as a data clearinghouse right at the center. So that anytime any system wants to connect with another system, uh, they need to report data into that data broker, and then uh, the other system can subscribe to and pull that data out of that data broker. At that point, uh, if you need to change or upgrade your ERP system, you're only reestablishing connections with one place, that central data broker, that central data clearinghouse. Keep in mind that data broker is not storing the data, not long term. That's done by each of the applications that do their job really well. The lab system does lab and quality systems very well. The warehouse management system uh, can store the warehouse data, so they each become their own systems of record for that data. But if you want to share that data, other systems can have access to it to uh, connect all layers of the organization and everybody can have access to data across all those layers to make important decisions, take action uh, so that they can innovate. So a quick example of how this would work. Let's say you want to calculate OEE. The PLC can publish the data into the data broker and maybe the CMMS system can publish some data into the data broker about planned and unplanned downtime for a machine. That data can then be subscribed to by the MES or Manufacturing Execution System. It will run its calculations and then that calculated OEE value can be published back into the data broker so that another system like maybe the uh, business intelligence dashboarding system can then display that OEE values uh, over time. What uh, adds even more value to this kind of structure or this kind of solution is to uni use the unified namespace, which is a way to structure the data across the whole enterprise within the data broker. Uh, that is to define uh, the enterprise, the site, area, lines, and cell, or to structure the data in that kind of tree leaf control. Think of Windows Explorer in your Microsoft Windows operating system and how you look at your folders, or uh, in Linux, or any other kind of tool that gives you access to the folders on your computer. They're typically displayed in a tree leaf control. You click on your C drive. In your C drive, you have multiple folders. You click uh, on one of those folders, then it drops down and displays another list of folders. Click on one of those folders, it drops down and displays another list of folders uh, and files. It's the same idea. So you could organize your systems to have the Coca-Cola Enterprise, the Pittsburgh manufa Manufacturing Plant, uh, building number three, bottling line number two, and the capper, the bottle capper cell uh, within that organization, and then the PLCs under that, so that you can uh, find the data very easily across the whole organization uh, so that you can have access to it. And of course, uh, again, included in this idea of the unified namespace is not only the data from the PLCs and the machines, but the data for schedules, the data for the OBE calculations, the bills of material, the orders, all of that data that you want to get uh, and pull together. The reason why this is so important is because of context. Data from a machine can tell you a little bit about what, what's going on in the machine. 
data about an order from a customer is fairly valuable. But what if you actually combined the data about the machine working on that order uh, and the information about the order and the customer itself, maybe the data from the vendor that provided those materials and the operator and the schedule uh, and the information about the machine and the maintenance schedule for the machine. Once you combine all of that data, you have an immense amount of value uh, uh, in that data that you can analyze and uh, determine where your issues are and how to solve them. Let's talk briefly about what the solutions look like. A pilot project for us typically looks like this, connecting to one or two machines uh, where they will uh, have their own data protocols that they can speak over. Uh, we will use some kind of an edge device like a an Opto22 Groove uh, Epic Smart PLC, which are very good PLCs, we like to use them. Or you could use a... Uh, 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 Maple Systems or Red Lion or uh, other kinds of uh, uh, edge devices to translate those uh, data protocols. Or you could even use an industrial PC that runs software like Kepware or something else to convert those protocols, to connect to those machines and convert the protocols uh, to the MQTT Spark Plug B specification. And then at that point, we would publish the data into the data broker with the unified namespace defined and publishing into that that structure of the unified namespace and then any other system can connect to or subscribe and pull that data and use that data so the canary uh, labs historian product and data visualization tool can constantly be pulling that plc data into its time series or historian database uh, for later reference and analysis uh, the ignition system or uh, from uh, inductive automation or the uh, frameworks or uh, factory studio tools from Tatsoft can subscribe to and pull that data in, do some analysis, create alarms and notifications, display data on HMIs for operators, uh, create dashboards for people to use across the organization, and get that real-time visibility into the plant floor for what's going on. And then at that point, once that pilot solution proves successful and valuable, then you can start to scale across the organization where you can add more machines, more cells, more lines, and more systems like your ERP system, your maintenance system, and then maybe even add more plants, plant number two, plant number three. And then at that point, the interesting thing is that with the data brokers, you can then start to layer the data brokers on top of one another. So that let's say you have a headquarters or a business unit or a division level uh, organization where you want to consolidate the information from all the plants. All you need to do is to set up that second data broker or that other data broker, uh, then connect the one data broker to the other, and then immediately all of the data, the current data that's published into this data broker at plant one can be available uh, within that same unified namespace uh, at the headquarters location, along with the data for plant two, plant three, uh, etc. This becomes a very flexible and scalable solution because you can add any system at any time uh, and select the right tools for the right job. And you can create screens like this, like this product, this MES Lite product that we have for dipping your toes into uh, those kinds of solutions. So just as a quick review, uh, to become a data-driven organization and to get that real context and value out of the data, connect everything and everyone uh, to, the, uh, to the whole IOT ecosystem so that everybody across the organization at all levels can have access in real time to what's going on in the plant. Create that digital strategy and those guardrails and in take inventory of your business and of the intelligence of the organization, the data you have and you want. Create that roadmap and on that journey of uh, transitioning or transforming into a data-driven manufacturing company, make sure that you tackle each of these projects one by one over time as they prove valuable. And then as you go down the road, you'll find that you've learned a lot of new information you never knew before. Uh, and then you'll be able to actually uh, uh, change course uh, in this incremental approach and tackle uh, only the, the right challenges at that time and not 
create some big or implement some big system that uh, uh, requires millions and millions and millions of dollars across a plant or across an enterprise uh, and by the time it's done in a year and a half or five years uh, the whole plant and the whole uh, approach for the organization and the challenges have all completely changed. Uh, also make sure that you are selecting the right tools for the right job at the right time. We've actually found over time uh, and uh, see others seeing this trend as well that uh, the big MES systems uh, are less common these days and organizations are realizing that there are smaller individual tools that do the right job for them uh, and are less expensive to implement uh, and to get operators and users to use. And that approach of using the right tool for the right job as opposed to a big system can be really valuable for manufacturers. Really appreciate your time. I hope this was really valuable for you. Uh, we look forward to you coming back again to watch more of our videos because we're very happy to pull back the curtain and share how all of these things work. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll see you soon.